solution. Here's an example I gave in changing the immutable. I, I hadn't seen other people mention this example, but I think it's quite significant. Uh, um, in uh, in the Basami Rosh, he has in one of the unsigned shuvos. Some are signed by the Rosh, others are just unsigned. It states that Rabbeinu Tam, the great Rabbeinu Tam, uh, uh, declared that the scholars of his day, we're talking in France now, in medieval France, should assemble in order to void the prohibition on non-Jewish wine. Why? Since Rabbeinu Tam, in quotes from Rabbeinu Tam, says that there's no, the wine that the non-Jews use is no longer connected to idolatrous ceremonies. Already, that's a bit of a problematic statement because what about the Eucharist? But okay, so I guess you're supposed to assume that Rabbeinu Tam doesn't see it as idolatrous. So here you have the rush, or well, not the rush, it's on side. The, the Basami Rosh telling you that Rabbeinu Tam said that all the Rabbanim should come together and void the prohibition on uh, non Jewish wine because it's no longer used for idolatrous ceremonies. The response continues that Rabbeinu Tam was convinced to show to show him this idea, to reject this idea. Why? Because Rabbi Shimon, whoever this Rabbi Shimon is, pointed out to him that in the future, the wine could once again be used for idolatrous ceremonies. So, on the surface, there's nothing radical with this response, because Rabbi Tam has this crazy idea, but uh, he's convinced it's a mistake. So, in the end, Rabbi Tam says, you're right, I retract it, and the response, and the conclusion of the tshuva is non-Jewish wine, so say, well, that's a conservative chuva, that's a traditional chuva. But really, because the basic idea that the prohibition could be um, voided has been raised. And it's raised in the mouth of none other than Rabbi Tom. It's a forgery. Now, what does this mean? This is it's a forgery. Times. Hundreds of years after Rabbi Tom, 700, 800 years, whatever it is, after Rabbi Tom, when it's obvious that uh, Rav Shimon's concern that maybe uh, once again they'll start to use wine and idolatrous ceremonies is not materialized, uh, the logical result would be to return to Rav Tom's Tam. It's original idea that today there's no reason to have a prohibition on non-Jewish wine. In other words, through this tshuva, and I don't think anyone has made this point, so I, well, I did it, changing the mutable, I don't think anyone else did, at least I didn't see it, through this tshuva, which ostensibly is a machmir tshuva, Strict. the Samim Rosh has subtly undercut the prohibition against non-Jewish wine, which was exactly Shal Berlin's point. At the end of it, the whole reason for the prohibition is that maybe one day they'll start using it for idolatrous ceremonies. Well, it's been all 800 years, let's say, since Rabbein Tom. They haven't started using it yet. It's no different, and there's no signs they're going to. So let's go back to Rabbein Tom's original point that uh, there's no need for it. So... Some, and, and you have other examples of this. And this is what I'm going to try to 